few of my responsibilities as the chef de cuisine is kind of in the title, chef de cuisine, chef of the food. I'm in charge of all of the food that's being produced and all of the people that are producing that food. I would say I'm under a good amount of pressure, especially representing this cuisine in my background. And I really want to make sure that I'm being a proper leader for them. Hey, I'm Juliana Latif. I'm the chef de cuisine of Zuzu's. Why don't you guys come on in? Right now, it's very quiet in here, but in a couple hours, it's gonna be packed. We serve lunch and dinner, feeding over 600 people for the day. It's 9.30, and the first thing we get to do today is set up this beautiful, gorgeous fire. We have our grill cook here, David. He's gonna blow this thing up right in flames. We're gonna throw about 40 to 60 eggplant on here and get that ready for our dip. Let's go check in with the team and taste some dishes for lunch. This is our wonderful prep team back here, getting everything ready for lunch service. Lots of work to be done here today. So right here we have our prep lists for the day. So our colors over here are essentially per person. Over here we have it all broken down kind of by station. So this is all based off of who's working that day, based off the schedule, which I also take care of. So every day we have a dozen people in the kitchen in the morning. So the first thing I'm gonna be tasting today is some of our dips. I'm here with one of our line cooks, Kristen. She's been with us since the beginning. She's amazing. Our dips are like a huge, huge part of this restaurant. It's essentially setting the mood for the entire meal. About every single table that comes in gets a dip tower. We sell about 80 dip towers a day. All right, so this one's our green tahini. It is a hot seller. We do a little bit of whipped aquafaba on top of it. Whipped aquafaba is chickpea water that we season with garlic, lemon juice, and thyme. And we whip it in a KitchenAid mixer until it has these nice, you know, hard peaks. It hides the green tahini and it's really, really fun. Most of our dips were actually a collaboration between me and the executive chef, uh, Chef Madeline Sperling. We both had a lot of fun creating and getting crazy with it. So a big thing here is also texture. There's a little bit of avocado to make it nice and smooth, some lemon juice. Right now, Kristen nailed it. I'm gonna taste the uh, whipped aquafaba next. This is our chickpea water. It's seasoned with grated garlic, lemon juice, and salt. It is gonna taste very, very strong because once you whip it and aerate it, it'll really tone down those flavors. It's my coffee for the day. Right now, I think this could use a little bit more lemon. All right, you wanna taste it too? Always make them taste it. You know, if I notice something that is missing and when we, you know, add lemon juice or whatever we need to add to something, we'll taste it again together so that their palate kind of registers what we're looking for. So this is our duck burek. These are for dinner service. We have our amazing prep cook, Risa, over here building a bunch of them. She's going to prep about 30 to 40 of these, but before she does all that, I'm going to pop these in so we can taste it before, you know, we carry on with our day. All right, so this is our ember roasted eggplant dip. I'm looking for that smoky char flavor. A lot of times with this, they clean the eggplant a lot and we lose some of that char. When that does happen, we will roast a little bit more eggplant, get that skin in there and make sure it's nice and smoky. Very good. All of these flavors are all flavors that I grew up with. I'm of a Lebanese and Jordanian background. Everything has a little bit of warmth and a little bit of home when I get to eat it, so it's a lot of fun. So a barek is a traditional filled pastry in the Levant area. The duck barek is one of our signature dinner dishes. It's essentially based off of the duck a l'orange that is a classic French dish. We've got one that has a little bit of a mistake, but this is why we do this kind of stuff. Right here, the uh, pastry kind of ripped open. You wanna kind of roll it nice and loose so that it doesn't end up tearing. It's a nice crust, not too oily, nice and crispy. I'm gonna taste this thing now. Very good. You know, having a lunch service is a plus and a minus. We have a you know huge break of our prep time to go ahead and serve about 200 people. But it's also a great bonus because all these wonderful cooks get to help us prepare and get ready for dinner, which the speed of service is a little bit different. You know, we're serving a lot of food for a longer period of time. It's about 10.30 right now. I'm gonna get this stuff put away. I'm gonna hop onto some last minute butchery for service, but I am gonna touch base with Raisa about, you know, how tight she's rolling the duck Rex and get going for lunch soon.
All right. So this is our local New York City fluke. We have a little bit of sweetness in this dish from the pickled radishes, and then a little bit of heat from that zoog juice. It's a green hot sauce, usually made with serranos or jalapenos. So every day we butcher one fresh fluke. I'm gonna break it down into nice uh, four fillets, and then I'm gonna cure it with a salt and sugar rub. Depending on the size, we could get about 20 portions of crudo. This is my favorite part of the day. There's something very, you know, romantic about butchering fish and I have a lot of pride in it. I get to teach a lot of people how to break this down. One of my duties as a CDC is to teach people how to do everything. So I'm passing on all my knowledge to the team and it's really rewarding. So I'm actually just going to make a couple marks right now of where my fillets are. Down here the fish has its guts, so I'm going to cut around there and make sure I don't puncture any guts and make a huge mess. I'll go right down here, right in the spine, and you can kind of feel it. Some people like to remove these guts before they break this down, but I like to kind of live on the edge. Using my boning knife, holding up against the uh, bones, that's the key. You know, you always want to hear your knife kind of hit these bones, and that's how you know you're doing a good job. So that's one filet, and we're going to get four all day. But this side is the flatter side of the fish. It's going to have a little bit less meat. As you can see, there are no eyes on the side of the fish. Funny looking guy. Now I'm gonna remove the skin, trim it up, and get it ready to cure. If you have a really nice sharp knife, all you gotta do, let your knife do the work. Now they're ready to be cured. Right here we have our fish cured. It's just a very simple three to one, three parts salt, one part sugar. So essentially the cure is just gonna season it, kind of quote unquote cook it a little bit, and then I'm gonna portion some already cured fluke for our lunch service. So this is a single bevel slicer. It's meant especially for fish. It's very top heavy so that your knife kind of does all the work. A little bit of olive oil on a napkin to kind of wet my knife, lube it up, and a little bit right on the fish so it's easier to slice. Essentially, I want a nice thin slice. I don't want to get it too crazy thin to where there's no texture. I'm not putting any pressure down on this knife, otherwise the fish will shred. For lunch service, we'll serve about eight to 10 orders of fluke, and dinner service will serve about 15. So we prep about 20 plus orders of fluke every day. All right, so it's 11.15 right now. Let's go set up Expo for lunch. All right, we've got 10 minutes until people start arriving and this dining room fills up. This is our Expo board. This is what we use to hold all of our tickets and organize them for service. Our line is broken up into four sections. We have garmage over here. This is where we do all of our salads, crudos. Right down here, we have our dip section. And then over here, we have a saute section where we fire some burgers. And then all the way at the end, we have the wood fire grill that's the star of the show. What's special about this line is that it's in an open kitchen, technically called our service kitchen. And in the back, that's our prep kitchen. They get the show and a meal. We try to have a lot of fun here. I always get a little bit of, you know, pre-service jitters, especially when expediting because you are the leader. I like to make sure that my ticket printer is nice and full with a fresh roll of paper. Your mood and your attitude going into service reflects how everyone's day is going to go. Got to keep it cool, calm, and collected. All right, we got our first ticket of the day. So I'll be calling the five dips and the first course first, and then I'll let everybody know what's on back and when to fire that. Fire five dips. We're gonna fire a hamachi and a fluke over here. And in our second course, we have two Caesar, two Cobb. So I'm marking the table number right on the bottom left of the ticket. This way I can stack my tickets without necessarily having to see the table number that's printed out. Got our second ticket in. So we have one hot app. Our uh, saute cook, Elian's, is gonna be firing one artichoke. All the way on the grill station, he has his own ticket printer so he will know when to fire those artichokes. That's kind of a solo station. You have to have a good memory. The trick for the cooks is to pull all their plates, so when they hear a Caesar salad, they'll pull a Caesar salad plate. And if they ever get confused, they'll ask me for an all day. And an all day is essentially what that station needs to make on the entirety of the board in that moment. All right, so we've got five dips going to counter one. And then what we have next is a hamachi fluke. And I'm just waiting for another runner hands, please. So you'll hear me call for hands, and essentially that's me asking the food runners to kind of step up to the plate and get ready to gather whichever table we're about to walk. You take one hamachi, one fluke, counter one. I crossed it off as it walked. To walk a ticket essentially means to sell the food to the 
food runners and they'll walk it straight to the guests. Myself and Chef Maddie, we interchange between, you know, who's expediting. For lunch, there's only one expediter. And then for dinner, we have two expediters, one on the cold station and one on the hot station. The expediter is like driving the bus and can't really let go of the steering wheel. We're gonna take two chickpea burgers, one with fries, one with salads, and a zoo burger to counter four. All right, so this ticket has fully walked. I'm gonna go ahead and stab it now. It's our first ticket of the night. Thank you so much. So this right here is what we call a chit. Essentially, it is for any VIP guests or any allergies, we'll get a little note like this. This is our way of communicating with the dining room team. So it's 2 p.m. right now. Lunch service is just about over, but my job's not finished. Follow me. All right, so we're gonna start taking inventory of some of our products since we have to do ordering every single day here. I'm just gonna come in, see what we have in house and see what we need to get in for tomorrow. We make these nice Excel sheets for all our different sections of where we need to take inventory. And if I need something, I'll kind of just put one case if we're all set on it, I'll give it a little check mark and say, we're good to go there. Tomorrow's Friday, it's a very busy day. Let's get a lot in for the weekend. We sell a lot of Labney. We press a lot of ricotta for that whipped ricotta dip. So we're gonna go check that walk in downstairs. Come on down. All right, so this is our dry goods area. Lots of fun stuff that I get to take inventory of. Something that I will check every day are pretty much the basics like salt, we go through maybe about four boxes throughout the whole building in a day. Sometimes accidents happen. People will spill a box of salt, so I'm gonna get an extra case just to cover our bases there. Right now, I'm just checking our inventory for our grape leaves. This is what we use for our fire-roasted sea bass. We go through about two to four jars a day. We've got about a dozen here. That's good for tonight, tomorrow, and maybe the next day. Also gonna check out our saffron that we have here. Saffron is very, very expensive. It's about $50 for this little tin here. This is something that we always have to keep track of. This is not really something you can run to the store and grab. Most of the uh, specialty goods are from Calustians. That's one of our purveyors. They provide us with a lot of cool stuff. Next up is the produce walk-in. So right in here is where we keep all of our produce. We have, again, tons of product in here. It always needs to stay nice and tight and organized. Even if it feels like we have a lot in here, we always need to get a little bit more to cover, you know, our bases, because you never know when someone's gonna order maybe three dip towers for two people. <laughs> I have to go place these orders now and then shift into dinner mode. All right, let's get out of here. four o'clock right now. This is our last push before our big dinner service. Right here we've got our lamb stock going. Really super important ingredient in this restaurant. It's in a couple of our sauces. Most importantly, the sauce for the smoked baby lamb chops when we make a smoked cherry sauce, and this is the base of it. This lamb stock will add lots of body and lots of depth and flavor into that smoked baby lamb chop sauce. You're eating a lamb chop and you're tasting the sweetness from the sauce, but also there's a little bit more depth from all this lamb. So this goes for two days. Yesterday we roasted up all of our lamb trim from any of our product, got it in here with some mirepoix, a little bit of tomato paste. Early this morning we strained it, constantly skimming the fat off of it and letting it to reduce to our desired texture. I'm looking for color, I'm looking for flavor, and I'm making sure that there's not too much fat in here. Really good, it's super close. I think it needs to go for another, you know, half hour, 45 minutes to get to that perfect consistency and then we'll be good to go. And the rest of the items I got a taste right on the line, so follow me. Right behind, right behind. So one of the first things I'm gonna taste for dinner service is our tomato vinaigrette, which is gonna go on our sea bass. It's pairing with a very simple fish. This has to be very strong. This is Lance, he's our grill cook at nighttime. He's made this for us, and we're gonna connect about it right now. Very good. I think it does need a little bit of olive oil. It's a little bit too acidic. What we're looking for a nice balance of heat, sweet, acid, so that olive oil is gonna kinda cool it down for us. Go ahead and fix that up for me, Lance. Our sea bass dish is very simple. It's butterfly black bass wrapped in grape leaves, and then we cook that right over the grill, so it's charring the leaves, steaming the fish inside, and then that is paired with this tomato vinaigrette. Very simple, but very strong flavors to kind of you know, balance it all out. 
Lance and I are tasting this back and forth, making sure he understands exactly what we're looking for. Perfect, good job. All right, so I've got to go taste a couple more things for dinner service, and then we're going to wrap it up and get out of here. What's up, chef? What's up? How are you? Very good. So all of our check-ins for dinner are done. We've gone through the whole prep list to make sure everything's finished. This place is about to get packed. Since I expedited lunch service, I'm gonna pass the reins off to Chef Maddie over here. I hope you guys had a wonderful time following me around and I hope I got to teach you a little bit about what it's like to be a CDC in New York City. I'm gonna get out of here really soon and you guys should too. Peace. He knows just about everything you need to know in this restaurant. <laughs> He's my number one guy. Oh, that's All right. Cute. <laughs> yeah.